Hello, this is the Trial Line Podcast. I'm your host, Bo. This is my co-host, Danny. Hey, mate. How you going? Good, mate. Great weekend of footy here. Um, what are we going to talk about this week, mate? All righty. We're going to start off with um, a couple of players that have been named in the Origin squad, New South Wales Origin squad. Um, so Daniel Saifidi and Zach Lomax have joined Cam McInnes, Tyson Frizzell, Jack Trojevic and Payne Haas in the Origin squad. Uh, I think they're both... nice. Pretty good picks. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Um, Zach Lomax has had a really good year down that right edge for the Dragons and probably arguably arguably been their best back. Um, Daniel Saifidi, he's been injured for a little bit of the year, um, but I remember him having a pretty good uh, series last year, so pretty excited to see what he's got in store for us uh, this year. Yeah, I, I think they're good additions. Um, not that I really care, being a Queensland fan, but... Uh. <laughs> but um, Zach Lomax, especially, I think he's um, probably earned a, earned a spot in the squad, if not in the team. Uh, we just shared on our Twitter, actually, at Troll on YT, um, a video of him telling his parents that he got picked in the squad, and it's really good. So go check that out, guys. Um, I don't really want to talk about too much who got picked. I want to talk about one that hasn't been picked yet and is um, a chance of missing out, David Clemmer. Now, I think, I think it'd be a big mistake to leave him out. Um, let me just run through his stats because I want to get your thoughts on whether you think he should be picked or not. But just um, his stats, he's second in running metres this year. He's third in metres per game. He's uh, first in post-contact metres. He's second in offloads and he's third in tackles. So uh, statistically, he's having one of his best seasons uh, since he's been in the league. So what do you think about him maybe missing out? Well, I think that would be an all-time snub, to be yeah. honest. I think the, the stats just rattled off, mate. You'd be, you'd be, you'd be joking if you if you left him out. Those are some good stats, mate. Plenty yeah, good stats. I mean, I'd be absolutely shocked if he didn't get a jersey. But I don't, I can't see him getting in. Why hasn't he been picked to um to this point? If he's going to be picked anyway. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what they're thinking of. Who's had a better season than him? Or I don't know. I don't know what what, what they're thinking. Oh, those stats were courtesy of uh, Robert Hughes on Twitter. So thanks for that, mate. Thought I'd just credit you there. All right, let's get in the games. Huge, ga- huge games this weekend. We started off with a banger on Friday night. I loved this game. It was finals footy. It had that feeling about it. Uh, the Roosters raced out to a 10-point lead and looked pretty dominant early, actually. But there was a big moment um, early in the first half. They were up 10-0. They had a scrum about 10 metres out. And you thought if the Roosters score here, oh, it could be game over. And the Panthers rallied and actually bundled Brett Morris in a touch. And then from then on, the Panthers scored 22 points in 25 minutes and went up uh, 12, 12 points at halftime. So that really turned the game. And that's actually happened to the Roosters a few times this year where they've been on top early and they've made a mistake. Remember against Melbourne, they they were carving them up and then they kicked it and give away a seven tackle set. Yeah, and they yeah, never yeah. got it back in the game. Against the Rabbitohs, they were really dominant early. And then they got two disallowed tries in a row, penalty, and then the Rabbitohs kicked on and scored 60 points. Like So it feels like if one bad thing goes against them early, they get rolled. Mm. Well, apparently so. Just looking at some of their last games. Um, but, yeah, you can you can sum up a little bit of that comeback odd uh, to Cleary, sorry. Uh, scored first half hat-trick. Yeah. Or will, will 15, 15 minutes. Scored three tries in 15 minutes, so Jesus Christ, bloody unbelievable. He's a gun. Yeah, well, I like I said, 22 points. Uh, that was 22 10 and a half time. Uh, they managed to get back into the game in the second half, which I think is a huge positive for the Roosters. Like like I said, they've they've kind of been um, not able to get back into those games when they they give up the early leads, but they got back into this one. But on the back of uh, Cleary and the the five eight uh, Lulu Luke. Luai. Luai. I always call him Luai. Yeah. Luai. Jerome Luai. Yeah, uh, they were able to close <laughs> it out. Um, great game for the Panthers. They get the week off. The Roosters have got to play the Raiders this week, so that's a that's a big game for them. But, um, yeah, Panthers, baby. Yeah, yeah, good for them. What is that, 15 in a row now? 16, I think. Oh, 16 in a row. 16. Well, good on them. Um, anyway, on to Saturday. Uh, we said that we are going to watch the NRLW games, and we did. Um the Roosters defeated the Dragons 18 to 4. Uh, this is the first game of W, of, not W, NRLW. That NRLW, I watched. yes. NRLW that I watched. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was actually it was actually pretty good. 
Um, That's good. Some of those middle forwards, man, they can they can really tackle. Um, in particular, uh, the the Dragons lock forward. Uh, what's oh, what's okay. her name? Uh, I've had her name written down. Elsie Albert. Man, yeah. she she, yeah, she can hit. I yeah, told you before the game because that that is the first game you've watched of the of the female. I I said I've watched them for like the last couple of years, just sporadically. But I told you, expect some shots. They, yeah, they man, can they, load up. They can put on hits, can't they? Yeah, yeah. They go after each other. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this game was was an upset. The Dragons. They've got a they've got a gun squad. They've got at least six international players. Their fullback, both their centers, their halfback. Part of me, one of the back rowers and one of their props, uh, all Australian players, and then uh, Elsie Albert, she's a Papua New Guinea international. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was. I thought it was a really good game. Unfortunately for the for the Dragons, maybe just not not enough time to gel. Well, look at that, your first ever game, and you are uh, picking upset against the last year's uh, grand finalist. So maybe you're you're an expert. <laughs> you're the resident expert of the women's I game. Am. Uh, I'm, I'm the it? best um, NRLW analyst on YouTube. Yeah, well, there, there you go. That's his tag from now on. Uh, what yeah. about the what about the second the second game? Go to uh, uh, media. The second game. All right. Well, the Broncos actually beat the Warriors in this one, 28-14. I did pick the Warriors though, so Broncos, baby. Yeah, Broncos, Broncos to win the comp. There you go. There's there's the thing. <laughs> the Broncos will yeah. win the comp. No, no. Um, the Warriors actually led early, eight nil. I think it was after about ten minutes. Uh, Broncos just came back too strong and ended up running away with it. Uh, Tamika Upton scored a, a hat trick in 12 minutes in this one. So, Cleary, you got up your game, mate. She done it in 12. You done yours in 15. So, get on, get on her level. Um, really nice tries too. She seems to have a good uh, left foot step on her. So, watch out for her. Right, the first, the the second semi final for the the men was the Raiders uh, beating the Sharks 32 to 20. The Sharks started awesome. I thought. I thought. They, they put, like we said, the finals are a different game. They're, it's like a new season. They started really, really well. And it looked like they had to get, get the game plan to beat the Raiders. They, um, the Raiders really struggled to get out of their own end. They were really struggling for metres. Uh, the Sharks were turning the ball over like five metres out from their line consistently. But then Braley went down and the Raiders scored an intercept try, I think with a couple minutes to go in the first half. And it really, really hurt the Sharks. Instead of going in... 14-6, they go into halftime 14-12 and, you know, the second half Raiders, that's just what they do. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the Sharks, I thought they looked they looked pretty good in attack before, obviously, Braley went down. Yeah, Braley um, killed it was them. The, yeah, yeah, 100%. I was definitely, it was their defence that uh, that was kind of a bit shocking to me. Yeah. Um, they are the worst defending team in the top eight. So, I mean, you kind of, I mean, you don't expect it, but I mean, they're the worst defensive team for a reason. Um, yeah, the Raiders just came out in the second half, blitzed them. Well, we, we knew that was going to happen. They've, they've done it all year. But yeah, they can't have these slow starts. They, next week, they can't have a slow start against the Roosters. They've got to be on. They have to sure be on. Not. Because if, if the Roosters can jump out to a league, they'll be hard to peg back, especially do or die Roosters. They'll be very hard to peg back. So... They, you think they'd be up for it? Uh, the grand final rematch there. They'll definitely be up for it. Um, win or go home. But the Sharks, uh, credit to them. I thought they played really well. They really had no right to win this match. Um, the Raiders have a much better side, and it was down in Canberra. But they showed a lot of fight, and I was, I was really happy with their effort, especially in the first half. Another team that showed a lot of fight here was the Eels. They went down 36-24 to the Storm. Um they start off really sh- strong. They had a lot of energy. I think they out, out enthused the storm. Uh, Gutherson leads that. He's just he's just everywhere, and I think he's been uh, probably him and Chilvaschek have been the two best captains this season. Um, but you got the feeling when Melbourne's bench come on, like I said last week, they were always going to be too good for the Eels, and that's what happened. Yeah, well. When you say the bench, when the bench came on, the bench was going to be too good. Okay, so get this. So the Storm made four subs and the fourth sub, I think the first sub was in the 20th minute and the fourth sub was in the 27th or 29th minute. I can't really remember. Um, but the Storm, you watched the game, you saw the game. They were struggling to find the line. Parramatta were defending pretty well. 
Yeah. It's just after that fourth substitution was made, it took 30 seconds for the Storm to score their try, their first try. Yeah. So 30 they've, seconds after they made their subs. They've got a very, very good bench. And Para have a very skinny bench, I think. And um, it really got found out. And with a couple of injuries to Para, and their, their right side defence, I think is absolutely shocking. I think they've, they've got to fix a lot if they want to beat Seas next week. I'm really looking forward to that game. Me, with my Cowboys gone, I default to Seas. Everyone knows that. That's my whole family goes to Seas. You're an Eels fan, so that'll be that'll make for good viewing on the weekend. But um, they've got to change. They've got to change a lot if they're going to beat Seas next week. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the injuries really hurt us because at one point Parramatta had one player on the bench. Yeah, and that was yeah. Will Smith, and yeah. we both we we still had both of our front rowers on. Yeah, and you're not going to sub either of them off for. And Paulo got found out a little bit around the middle because he had to play big minutes and um, he's not used to playing that big of minutes in a row. So um, he did get found out a couple of times, but I mean, you can do it. You showed, you can match it with the Storm. Storm are one of the benchmark sides. You you can do it. Can you do it for long enough? We'll find out next week, I think. Um, The Rabbitohs uh, beat the Knights in this one, 46 to 20. Uh, same story as the whole weekend. The underdog got out to a lead. Uh, the South pegged them back. Um, South played like South can play in the first eight minutes. I think they dropped the ball twice, kicked the ball out on the full. And if you give the Knights that much uh, that much ball, they're um, they're going to be able to score a couple of tries. I think they made a big mistake going for two. They were up twelve nil, and they were, had South on the rope, and they took the two to go to fourteen nil instead of trying to score again. And then they yeah. gave up forty six straight points. After that, so that that's just that's yeah, game yeah. Over. yeah. I mean, well, if the Rabbitohs can hold on to the ball, I think they could possibly beat anyone. I mean, yep. we saw it last week against the Roosters, and then a few weeks before that against Para. Um, but yeah, they started off really, really slowly against the Knights, and the Knights took full advantage. Um, but if Seas can hold on to the ball, do you think they're a smoky to make the GF? I think if they can hold the ball, they're a smoky to win the GF. <laughs> I, I I honestly think they when they complete over eighty percent they are one of the best attacking sides in the comp and they just don't give you the ball because they just constantly score it so they don't really need mm. to defend but they can run up the scoreboard in quickly I think um I think well they scored forty six points in what the last sixty minutes of the game so like uh, let's say forty six points in that was the last. What 65? 65 minutes. And they they oh. done it, they done it with ease. Oh no, she yeah, sep- they scored it in 70 minutes. Yeah. So 70 minutes, yeah. You were right. It's like just that. it's they can do it. Can they hold the ball enough? That's that's gonna be um we're gonna find out a lot of answers this weekend. Just before we uh wrap up, I just want to do a quick um overachieved, underachieved with the teams that got knocked out. I think we'll start with the sharks. Do you think they overachieved or underachieved this year? Uh to be honest with you, I was telling you before, I did not have any expectations for the Sharks. Yeah. Um, so for them to make the top eight, I guess, I guess they overachieved. I didn't have them in my top eight at the start of the year, so I'm going to put them as an overachieved too. What about the Knights? Um, well, the Knights, they did have a lot of injuries to key positions. What they lose? They lost McCulloch, Jaden Braley, uh, bloody, who's that other bloke? Connor Watson. Yeah. Uh, Blake Green. Blake Green, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, they lost all those players yeah. to injury, to season injury injuries. So, I mean, I can't really say whether they under... I think... I don't know. I can't really tell I, you, mate. I I agree with that. I think they injuries really hurt them. But I'm going to say they underachieved because I don't think they played their best footy for like the last month. I don't think they played their best that they can play, even with the team that they got out there. So I'm going to say underachieved. I did have them running fourth on my ladder at the start of the year, but that's before all their injuries. So I'm going to say they underachieved, but um, good good year from the Sharks, I think, to, to get where they got. All right, that's it. We'll be back Thursday. Uh, Denny will be wearing his power jersey, I'd say, and uh, probably. You know, the Rabbits. Enjoy your dinner, guys.